In the lab that we're going to be dealing with today, uh, we're going to be dealing with a new type of current, and that's called AC current, or alternating current. And really, the major difference between DC current, direct current, and alternating current is just what the current actually does. If we were to actually draw a picture of the AC current, it would start at some value, and it would do a wonderful little sinusoidal curve back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this value here, this peak, peak value here uh, is the same on the top and on the bottom. And we're going to alternate between the top point and then the bottom point back and forth, back and forth. And this is a little bit different than the DC current we've seen before because in DC we normally start at some value and we just sit there and nothing really changes. However, AC current, it does change, so we have to redefine some new things. We just want to go over some quick uh, nomenclature for us. The standard version that we get for, say, the current, a similar thing for voltage, is that the current at any point in time is going to be given by the peak current, I0, times the sine of omega t. where omega t is time multiplied by our angular frequency. Sometimes you'll see that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. So if we look at our wall outlet, a wall outlet is at 60 hertz. The value of 60 hertz is the value that we get for f. So we can get a corresponding value for omega and figure out our equation for um, the current. And as we go through this, uh, not only do we have to worry about necessarily one current, but in the lab we're going to be doing today, we're going to actually be working with three different phases, what it's called. And the three different phases uh, are going to be shifted from each other. So if I were to redraw this and draw a new sinusoidal curve, just offset a little bit, we can see that any point on here, any of these points here, that were shifted by a value which I'll call phi. And our new equation for this line, our second line, is I is equal to I naught times the sine of omega t again minus this phase shift. And by definition, we call this phase phi the, uh, a phase shift. The period of oscillation for these, we start at the peak of 1. It goes up, down, up. So the period will be from one peak to the next peak. So this is what we sometimes will call the period of oscillation. It's a little bit more common to see this when we talk about harmonic oscillators. Um, not as much when we talk about frequency, but every so often we'll see it. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. All the stuff that you learned with harmonic oscillators last semester, we get to apply again. So the last thing we want to cover is the concept of RMS. And by RMS, means root mean squared. Really, this is nothing more than kind of instructions to us. And we'll see something in the case of voltage, V, as VRMS. And we want to know what does this actually mean, and how do we figure it out? Well, figuring it out is actually pretty straightforward. VRMS, our root mean square uh, voltage, this is what we will define as a characteristic voltage, is the peak voltage, the one that we saw before, if we have current, the current RMS is equal to the peak uh, current divided by a factor of square root of 2. Straightforward, easy to understand. However, why that actually comes about, a little bit tricky. We have to go through this thing and what we want for our RMS, because uh, we have a sinusoidal curve, because our current is constantly changing, it's hovering around zero, it's going from a peak to a minus peak, back and forth, 
If we were to say, what's the average voltage? Well, it's zero, or the average current, it's zero. So we have to have another value that we, uh, we want to describe this. So what we came up with is RMS. So what we do is, the first thing we do is we take our sinusoidal curve and square it. So we'll get a curve, same thing as before, except for all of our values are squared. So instead of getting the up, down that we see from our sinusoidal curve, we will get everything positive. So that is our squared value of our RMS. Our mean value means you take the mean value of this. And we'll see that for these points up here, this area up here will fit into this blank here. And same thing over here. And we'll see that all these values here mathematically will fit together. So our average value is just this line here. And since we don't want the squared value, we want the roots value, we go ahead and then we take the square root. So what this looks like mathematically, the voltage RMS, as we said, was the peak over square root of 2. However, it's equal to the voltage squared averaged square rooted. And this is by definition what RMS is.